Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Verche Evermore, and I shouldn't sound so happy to be in a damn cage, but I am! Did you get in the cage? If you didn't get in the cage, then I'm gonna need you to leave, because only people who are in the cage are allowed to watch from here on forward. So, either get in the cage, get in or get out, bitches! <laughs> oh god, we're in a cage. Okay, I don't know that we're in the cage, but he has a cage now, and I just... I'm... Okay, so... That brings up the logistical question, though. Like, we've been to his house, we've been living here and everything. When did he get said cage, and where did he acquire it? I mean, obviously it wasn't in his house, so we had to bring it here, and he's, like, strong, so obviously just, like, pick that shit up, put it here, not a big deal. But, like, has he been planning to maybe kidnap me and stuff me in a cage? Like, I'm just... You know, I, I mean, with other love interests, it's like, you know, with Toma, it was a dog cage. You know, I bought a dog crate. And that makes sense. And, you know, with Gretel, it was, you know, probably a, like, what about my sister in a cage? Like, probably premeditated, and he's probably built the cage a while ago. But, like, so, like, did Lucas build the cage a while ago? Like, just in case? Like... I mean, for a man who's, like, literally about to die, that's, like, ambitious. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, it just in case two days before I die, she happens to find me and I need to put her in a cage, I should build one. I'm just saying smart thinking, right? I, but, sir, you didn't need to put me in a cage. I'll stay willingly. She, she seems a little questionable right now because, you know, he doesn't know that she just realized she fell in love with him. But, like, and, and maybe she's questioning those feelings now, but, like, I'm not. I mean, Jesus, you got me a cage. If I wasn't already here, I'd get here faster. You know what I mean? Like, shit. I'm sad I didn't get here two hours ago, is all I'm saying. Like, I arrived on time. I wish I was early. <sighs> well, here we go. I could hear the relivers screaming as the experiments continued, but I was unable to do anything about it, and I ended up back at Lucas's house. Anko, who had been sleeping here, was no longer around. I am a little sad that he might have absolutely destroyed Anko, though. That's... that's rough. All that remained were bloodstains that I could only assume belonged to him. Please tell me we get a CG and... Oh, look! We get to see the... Or the house through the cage bars! Not only do we get to see the cage in the background, we actually get to see life through the cage! Game! Like, I know I shouldn't be happy about this, but this is great! Thanks! The attention to detail in this game is exceptional, is all I'm saying. They were like, there's a cage. And not just, do you see, it's like, hey, hey, this is what it looks like being inside the cage. This is your background for now on, is in the cage. Awesome! Cool! This is... I should not enjoy this as much as I do, but you know... I was gently pushed by the shoulder into a, a space large enough for several people. There in the oh, in into a space large enough for several people. There in the middle of the room was a large iron bird cage. Always a bird cage too. And and we get to see Lucas through the bars. I will have you spend some time inside here while I'm gone and when we go to sleep. So I don't get to sleep next to you. I guess cuz you're asleep and you think I'm going to run. You could just chain me by the ankle or something. I'd be fine with that. However, as long as I'm around, you're free to do whatever you like. Despite the unsettling words he spoke, Lucas looked as happy as usual. Oh, I'm sure he's happier. In fact, I almost felt like nothing had changed, that we were back to our, our peaceful daily life. Still, I hope you'll not abuse your freedom. His low tone brought back memories of when I saw him with the bloodstains that changed my image of him. Unable to stay quiet any longer... I trusted you! I feel like, I trusted you. I trusted you. That's exactly what you would say in this situation. Not, you tricked me! But like, you tricked me. It's like, I trusted you. Because that's probably almost one of the most hurtful things you can say, aside from, what, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. <gasps> so I think it's I trusted you. 
Oh, guys, how many bad endings? How many bad endings does Lucas have? This is two. Oh, God, one of these answers is going to get us stabbed. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, what's the right answer? You tricked me. Oh, I trusted you is going to get us stabbed. Oh, oh, shit. All right, I was doing good with the Lucas answers until now, apparently. Apparently, I just don't know how to handle being in a cage, because I'm just, even, we've, it's only happened, what, three times that I can think of? This is being the third. What are the other, I can't, I can't recall. It has, it, it happens enough that it's a trope, and yet not enough that I know the right answers for being in the cage. I just, <sighs> I'm bad at being a caged bird. Okay. You tricked me. You were tricking me all along. I never thought the culprit I was trying to find was you. It must have been funny seeing me cower from Bordeaux's shadow. I didn't hold back, knowing I could be killed. Your... Suddenly his expression clouded. No, I'm making excuses at this point is useless. Because of my carelessness, I exposed you to such gruesome sights on more than one occasion. I'm truly sorry. If only we could somehow wipe those images from your memory. I didn't want his apology. I do like the fact that he has no remorse about murdering relivers at all. Like, none at all. There's no empathy whatsoever there. And yet, he has empathy for us in a way like, God, I'm, I didn't want you to have to see those gruesome sights. That, like, like, you're aware. You're self-aware enough to know that what you're doing is gruesome and violent, but you're like, yeah, but it's necessary, and I don't see anything wrong with it. You're like, you don't feel bad? No, they're not people. It, You know what I mean? It's like, no, I mowed the lawn because it was getting too long. Like, the grass was too long. I mowed it. It's fine. Like, like that's like, like, it's just a common occurrence, and now, like, uh, you, you're stabbing people. Yeah, well, no, relivers. They're different. They're not people. Whatever. Like, um, like, just a casual fucking Sunday mowing the lawn, okay? And yet, then he's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Did the noise of the lawnmower scare you and wake you up? Oh my god, I'm so sorry that I disturbed your rest. He's self-aware enough to like that, but like, no empathy over for the people he murdered, but empathy. It's so fucking bizarre. I mean, I get it, because in his brain, again, relivers aren't people. So he's not doing anything wrong. But we are a people. And our friends are, so he doesn't want to hurt them. Oh my god, no, I would never hurt them. That's why I was just I was just trying to, like, push them away from me. I wasn't actually going to kill Eve and Adolphe. Like, god, no, they're people. What the fuck? I'm not a monster. I'm just killing the monsters. I don't understand why you don't get this girl. Like, <laughs> He's crazy as fuck. I love it. It was great. Good text. Anyway. I like it almost better. Again, I knew he was Boro the whole fucking time. But, like... I kind of like the way they did it better than him just being like, no, like having this like, no, relivers are blah, blah, blah. He's more like, no, relivers aren't people. Yeah, I'm getting rid of the demons and the monsters and whatever. Like, he's so chill about it. Like, as opposed to like, you know, Math is getting angry. Like, I'm going to kill Burrow. He killed my family. And he's angry and trying to get revenge. That's like a normal human emotion. But like Lucas's emotion about kill, he doesn't exist. He has no emotion about killing relivers because it's like, again, Whatever, I'm not doing... Like, what, I just opened a can of soup. I don't know. It's, it's a can of... Soup. Like, if someone was like, Oh my god, I can't believe you opened that can of soup! What are you doing? You'd be like, it's a, it's a can of soup. I don't... Why are you freaking out? Like, you know what I mean? And that's exactly how he's looking at it. Like, I don't understand why you're mad. Like, they're not human. I... Are you okay? Like... <laughs> that lack of empathy part of it is just especially because it's not like he has no empathy at all he's not a complete monster he's like half a one it's crazy so much better god yeah we get to be in a cage god damn it this is great good times anyway i didn't want his apology i don't either i want him to kiss me now why do you feel guilt over that don't you feel anything about taking the lives away from re from the relivers what about nadia she doesn't know anything She's only associated with the society to, so, to show that she doesn't want to become a reliver. So please keep it a secret from her. She's a very kind girl, so it would hurt her to know others were dying, even if they were demons. Understood. 
I didn't want Nadia to know the truth either. I kind of also like here where normally you'd be like, what the fuck? I'm going to tell her everything, you psycho. But you're like, I don't want to hurt Nadia like that because she loves you so much. So it's okay, I'll lie. To protect Nadia. But also because you're like, I don't want Nadia to be mad at Lucas because I love Lucas. You know what I mean? Your kind and loving brother was actually a murderer killed in order to save her. Not alone would probably cause Nadia to collapse from shock. Yeah. But we're okay covering up murder. Just so Nadia doesn't suffer. And that's kind of funny. It's a little fucked up, but I can understand. And I'm okay with it. Okay, because Nadia doesn't deserve to suffer. Before long, he apologized again as he closed the door of the cage with me inside. The sound of the lock clicking against the small prison rang coldly inside the room. You know, how is he going to explain this if anyone shows up at his house looking for me? Nope, you can't come in. You'll see her in the cage. <laughs> I didn't expect you to find out who I really was, but... Really? You did a shit job at hiding it, sir. Okay, I'm sorry. The artists gave Oro the exact same sprites, the poses that you had, so it was kind of obvious. How fortunate it is that I can now spend my final days with my loved ones. I'm so blessed. Are you blushing beautifully at me? Yes, you are. We'll be together until my death. My very own angel. And the fact that he is so obsessively in love with you is... I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda hot. I, I... Listen. He smiled weakly as he looked through the bars of the cage. This is just not gonna end well. We are gonna die a lot, because there's at least two bad endings here. And he is definitely not making it out alive, because he doesn't want to be a reliver. So, like... I don't see a happy ending at all in this. Going to sleep. Nothing I said would reach him. I sank down into the makeshift a bed of blankets under me. My body and mind were tired and heavy. I just needed some rest now. I wonder if she's gonna get, just like, accept it, just so she can, like... I kind of feel like maybe not in this ending, because it's the tragic ending. You know what I mean? But... Yes, good night. Sweet dreams. Also, we got like two more chapters. Are we in chapter three now? I don't remember. As he spoke, he lay down beside the cage covering himself with a thin bedsheet, unfit to stave off the cold. It seemed he had no intentions of sleeping in the, the now-empty bed. The wall clock ticked away in the silence. The place where I made such happy memories had become my prison. My heart ached with sorrow. I bit my lip in an effort to fight off the tears. It kind of almost would have been... I think it would have been a little more interesting. Oh, look at his precious, beautiful CG flashback. I think it almost would have been a little bit nicer. I mean, right now, just where we are right now, because I don't know what's going to happen, obviously. If we had, like, when she figured out she was in love with him, had talked to Nadia or something, and Nadia had been like, oh my god, are you in love with my brother? My brother? And we're like, I think so. Like, don't say anything to him or whatever. Just so that Nadia might say something to Lucas. Because I feel like she's not going to admit her feelings. Because now she's having second thoughts. But like, I just kind of want to force her to be in love with him. Like, girl, you thought you were in love with him. And I know he's a murderer and a, a little bit of a psycho and everything. But like, you love this man. You're in a cage, but it's fine. Like, take him now before he dies. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. The wonderful moments I shared with Lucas shattered loudly in my mind. All the kind things he said or did were lies to trick my foolish self. Not all of them, I don't think. Yes. He betrayed everyone who risked their lives to capture Boro. He inflicted so much suffering. Uh, okay. Killed Mathis' brother. Well, not exactly! We know that's not true. I knew I didn't have the right to blame anyone, but I had to. Just seeing our life with Lucas flash before our eyes. Loved him, too. A teardrop rolled down my cheek. I never thought I would learn such a harsh, harsh truth after realizing my feelings for him. But seeing Lucas like this will only create more victims. His objective is to kill relivers, then Mother, Hugo, Cyan, and the others are all potential targets. Yeah. Like, I wonder... He's got such a good relationship with Sister Salome. 
Because I could absolutely see him wanting to kill Cyan, though. Abso-fucking-lutely. Because Cyan started all of this. Like, the, all the Reliver technology exists because of him. Now, killing him is not going to stop Reliver technology. But you could argue that, like, it's going to put up, like, they're not going to make much progress because who's the one behind all the progress? Clearly only Cyan and there's no progress being made because he's a lazy motherfucker. Look, I love my lazy princess, okay? But he seems kind of lazy. She's like, whatever, I don't feel like it. So, like, but Hugo did nothing wrong. Leave Hugo alone. I'm really afraid of Eve's route now because someone is probably laughing at me like, <laughs> wait, because like all the side characters are fucking psychos. Except for Nadia. But like, I'm just saying. Capucine is kind of involved in this whole murder thing. So like, he never was really portrayed as being anything other than a little bit of a shady bitch. You kind of got that. You're like, you belong to the Society of Exorcists. You're already a little crazy. So like, eh. I mean, he hasn't done anything so far out of the realm of unex like that defies expectation yet. You're like, yeah, no. We already kind of knew you're a little nutter butter. It's like, all right, you're part of this weird exorcist society. You're probably doing experiments on Nadia, and you're killing Reliver. Like, I mean, all right, eh. I, not unsurprising, basically. Okay, you kind of expected with him. You're like, you're gonna be doing some crazy weird shit because of like your like beliefs and everything. Jean was a complete un- like, no, why? Why did you do this to me? I thought you were nice. You know, that ripped my heart out a little. So, like, Hugo is the other, like, but at least we have Hugo. Oh, God, you're gonna do something awful too, aren't you? Oh, are you really a good boy? Or are you gonna be evil too? Like, I don't know if I trust anyone. I don't trust this game. But it sets you up with such wonderful characters and then puts you in a cake. I mean, that's- that's not a reason to not trust the game. That's a reason to absolutely be like, yay, this is even better! Should not be so fucking happy to be in a goddamn cage. Oh my god. I also need to find out where Unko is buried. I needed to kill my feelings. He wasn't my teacher anymore. The emotions I felt were simply an illusion. I, this is, I think, the most painful part. Is she, find, she was like, I love him. And then she's like, he lied to me. He's all the... I mean, was he hiding shit from you? Yes. But he didn't lie about his feelings or, like, the person he was to you still exists. He's just also a murderer. <laughs> it's just another, it's another facet to the little gem that is Lucas that you didn't know was there. You didn't know it was there. There you go. You know? So was he lying to you about everything? Not really. I mean, I guess lies of omission are still lies, but just didn't tell you that he murdered people and he was a little bit crazy. Around the same time, in one of the laboratories of the Institute on another sleepless night, hmm, I got some over here just in case, but oh, 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 and thank you for pointing out that in the game, when they're pronouncing it, they apparently say Dahut's name is like Hut instead. Like, or do they say Dahut? Because that's, okay. Okay. I looked, that's, that's absolutely fucking wrong. So, like, I mean, obviously, like, I wouldn't expect someone with a Japanese accent to be able to pronounce these weird-ass foreign names, because I can't. Because they're not, like, in, they're like, what the hell is this? It's, like, German or something? I don't even know. German? French? Where do, what are we even getting half these things from? I looked the names up, though, guys. I looked up the pronunciations, and I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it perfectly. But if you look this up and look up Dahut pronunciation, it's kind of like Dahut or something. It's it's similar to that. It's something like that. You're like, obviously, you're listening to a robot voice, and you're like, uh. Same with Capucine. I had to look them up because I'm like, the fuck is Cappuccino? Like, Dr. Cappuccino over here. Like, what the fuck are we going to call? Like, I had to look up the names. So I looked up the pronunciation. So, like, I'm not saying I'm right, but I'm more right. <laughs> I do like, though, when you post in there, like, in the game, this is how they pronounce it. Because Shooty is still one of my favorite fucking things in the world. And, God, I hope we never forget Shooty. Okay, I hope we never fucking forget that. You know, God, classic. Um, but like, 
I, obviously cyan and I'm not going with Brophy was because there's no Z in there. I don't, that's, is that like a German thing where you just add a bunch of W's and Z's and shit and V and wherever where there's no fucking, you just slap those fuckers in there. Like, what is with that? So like, I don't even know. So obviously I didn't look that up. But like, I looked up like Capucine and Dahut and, uh, and Eve. Because I was like, I'm pretty fucking sure it's like Eve, like Yvonne, you know what I mean? Like, you don't say the Y, like it's an I or an E sound, but and it's not I've. <laughs> I was like, I'm not 100% sure with this, you know. Because I's and Y's sometimes, you know, but anyway. So I did look them up. To get the best idea. So we weren't totally. Because I was like, Dahut, or Dahut, Dahut. The hut is nowhere right. I'm like, like we're going to Pizza Hut. Like we're going to the hut, guys. Like, the fuck. <laughs> Although, job of the hut. So now, <laughs> tiny little dog is job of the hut now. <laughs> uh, just picture that voice now every time he speaks. I'm not gonna do it, but just, just. Oh, good God. Anyway, here's a genetic. Hers is, a gen hers is a genetic disorder. I can't fucking read. Which means my hands are tied. After analyzing a few strands of beautiful blonde hair, Dahut let out a huge sigh. Oh, you know that's an unusual topic for you to research. Suddenly, Cyan appeared and snatched the analysis results from Dahut. Oh, of course. Cyan does have an S, so I guess that could be where the Z sound comes from. Still, don't, and I guess the double I is a... W? I'm still just trying to figure out how they get the pronunciation from for Cyan's last name. I, my brain is like, I don't... It's not computing, but whatever. Uh, hey! What the heck are you doing, Cyan? Give it back! I thought you were checking on Boro. You don't have time to be bothered by my personal research, right? I'm waiting for a report on the lost devices, so there isn't anything for me to do now. Cyan, that, uh, Cyan sipped on some coffee as he read the papers he just took. I see. So this is the genetic data of that patient you were talking about before. Substantial decrease in muscle mass. Or is the muscle tissue itself too fragile to regenerate? A pretty miserable state of affairs. And from the looks of it, I assume the patient's organs are similarly affected. And then he's like, and yet, yeah, they're bad, but then they're good, and then they're bad, and then they're better, and then wait a minute. I wonder if Cyan being Cyan is going to be smart enough to piece together and be like, wait a minute, this looks sus as fuck. Or like, Dahut going to see Nadia and then she'd be like, I got a new transfusion and I got a new medicine, so I feel a little better. And then he does it and then they compare and then they're like, wait a minute, I know where our stolen equipment went. Because there's a, they're spending an awful lot of time with these two, with Nadia, you know? You think so too, Cyan? You wouldn't have to know a possible cure, would you? If only life worked that way. You can't do anything, so just forget it. As Dahud frowned at Cyan's response, one of the researchers who overheard their conversation raised his hand. Hey, excuse me, director? The deputy director? What is a genetic disorder? I've never heard of it before. I like how very Cyan's like, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Probably not at the moment, but there are things you could do do about them. It's called medical science and you are scientists. I'm just right. Aren't you? You could just... But science like, no, no, no. I don't care about that. <laughs> like, again! I mean, okay, the man can't take on all the fucking science and all the medical fucking shit for this damn country, but he's just not interested in half of it, which is why he doesn't bother. Uh, I don't blame you for not knowing much about it. Since we have the opportunity, why don't we have a short lesson? I love that Dahut's so fucking smart. He has a little baby body. First of all, genes are the smallest unit of heredity, heredity that exists in the nucleus of each cell, composing the bodies of life forms. You all know that chromosomes are thread-like structures that act as blueprints and contain a vast array of genetic information. If not, you do now. Dahut used the system to specifically point out the helixes on the 23 pairs of chromosomes. We are learning so much! Now, obviously, the science in this game is going to veer off at some point. And you're going to be like, I don't... Wait, what? But, hey. Learn some fake science, guys. 
In other words, the color of our hair, our face, our bodies, and all information can be found inside these chromosomes. Without this genetic information, we wouldn't be able to maintain a normal, healthy state as humans. Now, a genetic disorder is a general term for abnormalities and mutations in those very important chromosomes and genes. Genetic disorder, a mutation in chromosomes and the DNA sequence. And I suppose another way of putting it is that someone's born with a defect in their br blueprint of life. Like if a part of the helix was missing or broken. Oh, that's not him talking, but... Hearing that, the researchers went pale. W wait a minute! Wouldn't that be a deadly disorder? Yeah, which is why science said trying to cure it was impossible. Some minor genetic disorders have been identified, but... In more severe cases, complications arise that significantly impair the quality of a person's life. We got a lot of those, but medical science has actually done shit, you know? To make you, like, live with these things. Just saying. There's a lot of disorders floating around. But in this world, they're like, yeah, those people are destined to die. Like the rest of us at 23, unless you get a new body. Although, to be fair, I don't think... I wonder if Nadia could even become a reliver. Because if you think about it, if her... It's not... She's not dying from the curse or whatever that kills everybody else. We're like, you know, if you think about it like old age, your body starts to fail. Oh, well, we genetically made a new body for you that was like your 23-year-old self and put you in it before everything started failing, right? But, like, Nadia, if her disorder and her illness is in her DNA, how the fuck are you going to build a body for her with her DNA that's not going to have that same genetic disorder? I mean, I guess because whatever science they're doing here, they're like, doo, 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 doo. oh, wait. We found where that little er, er, error message is, and we plucked that, deleted it, slapped it back. You know what I mean? Like, where you can't do that in the human body, because the human body is more than just ones and zeros. But in the computer process that they're making, she all just ones and zeros, and you can find that erroneous two and be like, no, 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 it's not supposed to be a two there. You know what I mean? Like, You know? But it does beg the question of, like, her parents wanting her to become a reliver, it's like, would that even be possible? You know? They're using your DNA to, like, create your new body. So, like... Because they've already even said, like, oh, you can't change things. So you can't be like, oh, uh, but can you change my DNA so that my hair is red this time? Or my eyes are green or whatever? So it sounds like they wouldn't be able to fix a genetic disorder either. Hmm. Of course, maybe her our parents might not have known. You know what I mean? And they might have just been like, oh, she's ill. Let's just put her in a new body. It'll be fine. But As Sly had finished reading Dahut's analysis results, he spoke up. And the reason it remains relatively unknown is that those who die are often assumed to have died from the country's curse of death. Other times they become relivers before symptoms of their disorder surfaces in their original forms. Researchers like Sine and I are able to find them, but most others have a hard time discovering them in the first place. Okay, but then that also begs the question, because he literally just said they become relivers before symptoms of their disorder surface in their original form. But, again, if you're creating a reliver off of a DNA sequence, and it's in your DNA that you're going to have this, you would keep having it, wouldn't you? Is this where I'm not supposed to get too hung up on the science? All right, let's not get to... I, I can't, though! My brain is like, make it make sense for me! All right, look, I should know. Like, I deal with my work on a daily basis, and I'm like, it makes no sense, don't ask me, I have no fucking idea. One plus one is a horse. I, I don't know why, but it's a horse. It's just what it is, so. And then other times I have to be like, you gave me a chicken egg, I'm not hatching a unicorn, you're getting a fucking chicken out of it. I mean, I don't know what you expect. But then other times a horse pops out and you're like, I, I, I logic does not work here. I don't, so, so I, I guess I should just not be getting too focused in the non-logic or the questions because it doesn't matter. You're gonna drive me crazy, guys. Now, what's scary about genetic disorders is that the genes themselves are affected. Unlike physical wounds or diseases, genetic disorders can't be fixed by becoming relivers. Okay, I mean, that was the question I had. What happens is that the person's clone inherits the same genetic disorder. Okay. So, so there's no cure? Well, no, because nobody bothers to research and find them, but they probably would if they did. And that 
in this country at least. And the best we can do is slow the process. Science shot down the idea before Dahud could say that he was looking for a cure. The thing is, is like, you, again, if you put in the effort, you could find a cure. Not right away, maybe not in time to save Nadia, but you could do this research. They're just not bothering. Now that new science answer was better than act, uh, was better than, was better than acting on false hopes. Well, but the researcher decided to press on wanting to know more. Director, Deputy Director, are you sure there's no cure? Well, I can't speak for outside countries, but we have reliver technology. Doesn't that allow us to manipulate genes? If there's a problem with the blueprint of life, couldn't we simply modify the genes during the clone production process and... How might we do that? Well, we could operate on the genes directly. Or maybe we could incorporate genetic data from a healthy body. I mean, doesn't the director sometimes threaten you when he's mad, saying he'll give you forearms? <laughs> That's just science sick sense of humor, but... And they can be modified using someone else's genes and a mix of special chemicals. And then it's pointless since genes are unique and incompatible, and will only com complicate matters. That came out in the weirdest way possible, but whatever. In fact, some idiot once tried something similar and ended up on death row. Huh? Long ago, there was someone who thought like you. He said he was going to recreate humankind to withstand the curse. I don't know, that sounds pretty, like, a good idea. He abducted children from the slums and performed disgusting experiments in secrecy. That does not sound like a good idea. It's like a good idea, bad idea, right? Good idea! Trying to create better humanity so they, they're not affected by the curse. Awesome! Bad idea! Abducting children and experimenting on them in secret. Like, you ever watch Animaniacs? Good idea, bad idea? That's exactly what we just had here. What? You were the one who discovered his crimes, right? Yeah, it happened upon him late one night. Wasn't it that a guy who kept fighting you? The flashy-haired guy. Ordy, was it? Oh, okay, is Ordy gonna come? Ordy has a name now. Is Ordy gonna show up somewhere? I couldn't sleep for three nights straight after I found a secret lab. Honestly, I'd rather not remember any of it. You think Ordy works for the, rel the exorcist people? It was quite a scene with those half-human creations of his. Have human creations? You'd probably puke if I told you, so let's just drop it. Doug continued by asking Cyan what happened to that mad scientist. Who knows? I handed him to the authorities. Doug, no, don't even think of trying to cure that patient on your own. We scientists trivialize life by sacrificing living creatures. And we're selfish and cruel. And we don't form attachments to saving individuals because... It's pointless. <laughs> sure sounds convincing coming from you, Cyan. I'm still really sad Cyan's, like, reliver mark isn't a tramp stamp, but, you know, the neck tattoo is sexy. And it's just there for everyone to see where the tramp stamp wouldn't be. Because, like, when would we ever see the tramp stamp? You know what I mean? But, like, still, man. Morning arrived after a sleepless night. I managed to pull up my heavy body. I kind of forgot we were in a cage and everything is sad here because, like, I have so much fun with Cyan and Duffin. Good morning, Spacey. I know it's a bit early, but I prepared breakfast today. It pales in comparison to the food you prepare, but I hope you can allow me some grace. The first thing that my eyes beheld upon waking up was a smile behind the iron bars. I prayed and prayed last night for this to be a nightmare, but... Good morning. The sight of the iron bars proved to me the, the futility of that wish. I shook my head to come to my senses and accept reality. It seemed he really didn't intend unlocking me in the cage, except at bedtime or when he was away. He naturally unlocked the door and let me out. I mean, what are we going to do, Run? First of all, we wouldn't even make it to the door before he grabbed us. And even if he was distracted and we managed to make it out the door, he'd fucking get us like within two feet. We know he's super. he's got superhuman strength and speed, so like, there's no way we're getting away. On the table was the breakfast that he prepared. The dishes looked a bit disorderly, with the ingredients cut unevenly which was interesting in its own way. 
Eat cautiously. Don't eat. I feel like don't eat is saying that we don't trust him and might get a stab. So I feel like we eat cautiously. Oh, no, we just don't eat. Okay. And that's not, okay. Interesting. I quietly looked at the food in front of me, unable to bring myself to try it. Not only did I have no appetite, but the bigger reason was that there was no assurance that the meal was safe. Pardon me. I braced myself for something to strike me. I love the fact that, like, we caught, now we're a caged animal and we're acting like we're an abused animal. And, like, I can absolutely understand that because you're afraid because he's a murderer. So, like, all your thoughts and your impression of him is totally changed and warped now. But I just, like, I don't think Lucas would ever fucking hit you or be violent with you at all. It's kind of fucked up in my brain to say something like that. Like, I know he's a murderer, but he's not abusive. Like, he is a murderer. But I just, I, I feel like saying that is like almost when you're like, no, I mean, he was just mad. That's why he hit me. I, sh I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have spoken to him when he was mad. It's like, no, 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 no. Don't justify abuse. What the fuck? Don't excuse abuse. Are you crazy? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you want to be mad at people in that situation, but you're like, no, we need to get you out of this. Like, don't justify or excuse any kind of physical abuse. And then in my brain, I'm like, that's exactly how I felt though. when I was like, Lucas would never hit us. Why am I, like, excusing his behavior, though? But, like, to be real, Lucas is a murderer. If we become a reliver, oh, all bets are off. He's going to brutally murder us. But, like, right now we're his beloved angel, so he actually probably wouldn't actually physically hurt us. As long as we do what he says. Which is a different abusive power dynamic here. But, like, you know. Yeah, there's so much disturbing about this. Yeah. He simply took a scoop of my meal with his spoon and carried it to his mouth. You see, it's safe. I didn't poison your food, so please don't worry. I felt a bead of cold sweat roll down my back at the fact that he knew I suspected him. I mean, he also did put sleeping shit in your milk. So, like, I, I, one, he can't really be mad at us for suspecting him because he is a murderer. And two, he did actually drug us before. So it's, but it seemed he had no intention of reprimanding me for my suspicions. No, because he adores you. And so he, this is another part of why he's crazy. <laughs> like he made an effort to show that the food was safe. If I refused now, there was no telling what he would do next. All right, then I slowly began to eat my breakfast. I chewed on the food much more slowly than usual washing it down with some black tea. Now the tea, that's poisoned. <laughs> to imagine. I could hardly taste a thing. <laughs> he suddenly smiled happily instead of getting angry over how glum I looked while eating. Yeah, because he's delusional. Is there a problem? I was just thinking how cute you are doing your best to eat. Ah, look, you have some sauce on your mouth. He reached out to the same hand that he used to gouge out Reliver's hearts to my lips. Fear forced my body to jerk back. Seeing my reaction, Lucas stared at me in surprise. My heart nearly stopped with fear. I, I can wipe it off myself. Of course you can. I suppose I'm treating you like a child. I apologize. And look, he looks so sad about this. And like, you feel bad, like, oh my god, we made him sad. You know, though, he kind of deserves it. God damn, this game does a number on your psyche, doesn't it? Fearing that his surprise would transition to rage, I hurriedly told him the reason. Lucas closed his eyes for a moment and... <sighs> I know. Oh, why don't we take the day off and go out for a walk? I can go outside? Yes. The royal decree is still in effect, so we must spend our days behaving as normal as possible for you to act as bait. Is there any place you would like to go? I understood that he meant I could go and see anyone, but I needed to hide my captivity. Still, most people held captive aren't given the option to go anywhere they want. Yeah, but that's because he loves you. And again, he can catch you. And if you were like, Lucas is actually Boro, they're like, <laughs> crazy knucklehead. Nobody would believe you. Wasn't he thinking that there was still a possibility I might try to get help? 
But if he really wasn't thinking about that, I might be able to use that to my advantage. The longer I took, the more lives might be lost to the person in front of me. Oh, I, it kind of hurts me that, like, she was in love with him and then now it's like... You know, like... I mean, obviously, we're not going to get a good end right now, but it still, it still hurts a little, you know? If you don't mind, then go and see Adolphe, go and see Mother. Oof. I feel like if we say Adolphe, that's kind of like a red flag because he's in the core and that's like, but going to see Mother is like, oh, I just want to go see her because, you know, she's, we'd see her more often normally. So I feel like she's the safe answer and he wouldn't suspect anything by that necessarily. You know, Adolphe would be like, uh-huh. Because, yeah, I mean, right now you could be like, oh, I just want to let him know that we haven't found anything, you know. Or see what they've found, but he's going to be like, uh-huh. Seems a little more sus. Oh, son of a bitch, guys. How many, how many bad endings do you have? And we are in chapter three, okay? Because that does say chapter three. Okay, what's the right answer, though? Oh! All right, that's a shocker. Well, I do not know how to behave like a captive bird. I don't. I don't. Once we, once he put me in the cage, I don't have the answers. Okay, that was not true. Save file one, I knew the answer. Well, that no, yeah. That was the one where we went outside instead of staying inside. Oh, no, I think I got that one wrong. No, it was like, if I stay inside, nothing's going to happen. If I go outside, not, like, I don't really remember my choice there, but it was like, both of them presented problems. But ever since he's put me in the cage, I just don't know how to answer. <laughs> I assumed Adolphe must be worried that we hadn't responded to his call last night. Ah, there you go. That, I forgot about the call. Okay, that makes sense. Then like, well, Adolphe called us and we didn't respond. So we should probably go see him and let him know we're cool. That was the reason I gave Lucas before we went out to see him. All right, all right. I forgot about that. So, okay. If I knew about, if I remembered that, would that have made my choice different? Maybe. Spacey, you were safe. The transmission ended suddenly, so I thought something happened. We headed to the core base, where Adolphe rushed forward as soon as he saw us. <laughs> You're the only one I can trust right now. I would trust Mathis, but he's holed up in his room being sad, and Jean is a psychopath. Jean's fine. Camille's in his button. You know, whatever. Actually, I might be able to trust Eve, too. But, like, Eve's not here right now. I just need you to save me. Lucas puts me in a cage. He murders people. But let's be real. I kind of like it a little bit, but... He killed Anko, though. Oh. Oh, buddy. I'm just going to pretend Anko's not really dead. He's a time traveler, so there's a version of him that's like, oh, wait, that's the me. Like, there is a version of him that would, I'm going to go warn her. And then they, another one just popped up in the place like, that guy's dead. That guy is, that version of me is so dead to all the other versions of him that are not dead yet. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we headed to the core base where Adolfo, okay, so he probably hadn't slept all night. There were visible dark circles under his eyes. I I'm sorry for worrying you, Adolfo. I guess I was so exhausted from staying alert for so long, I ended up falling asleep during the transmission. As was I. I'm truly sorry, especially since I'm tasked for protection. No, oh, as long as you two are safe, it's fine. I assume you two heard my message through the recording. It seems like only relivers are targeted, but that doesn't exclude you from danger as a witness. So continue to keep your guard up. <laughs> oh, Adolfe, Boro's not going to kill me because he's in love with me. Understood. So, Boro appeared again last night, right? I asked without without glancing at Lucas. Yeah, uh, this time relivers from Cohen were hit. We had our night patrol scouring the entire district, but he still got them. It's scary to think of what our punishment would be if our old leader were still alive. He spoke words that related to the person next to me, which triggered me to react. Yeah, what would your father think? That's actually kind of fucking interesting, though. What would Bernard think if we kept letting his son get away with murder? What would Bernard think if he found out his son was the one doing the murder? That is a circle of crazy. Previous leader, do you mean Lucas's father? 
Adolphe responded with a grunt as his face went pale, not from fatigue, but from the memory of his previous training. See, the thing is, is if uh, Bernard were still alive, he might be able to kick Lucas's ass, so... Was he that scary? Eve gets freaked out just thinking about him. Oh. Unbelievable. I can only imagine what kind of harsh training my father gave to those he taught. I'm very sorry that someone from my family caused you so much trouble, Adolphe. And that someone from my family is still causing you trouble. Do you want to add that on there? Well, we're the ones who wanted to become his apprentices, so there's no need to apologize. But I still don't know why he was so animate about wanting to establish the core. No, why the heck would he turn his back on his lucrative position at the Royal Guard in the first place? I don't know myself. I did ask him something similar before, but Father kept avoiding the subject, saying he'd tell me one day, but... But? I do recall him constantly telling me during training he wanted me to be someone who could protect the people of Coen. Then again, my father wasn't the type to have honorable sense of morality that you and Eve have. It was a mission. No, I think it was more an obsession. Does that ring true to you? A little. His father was so focused on protecting Coen, and now his son was destroying it. This would have been an interesting duel. I can only imagine what his parents would say if they were still alive. I'm kind of wondering if Lucas killed them. Lucas contacted Eve last night to apologize for terminating the, tra the transmission prematurely. His sister's poor health made it impossible to visit the Institute, and he couldn't back himself up while leaving her behind. He slyly mixed lies with the truth to make a believable excuse. And so, I've decided to hold off on creating any backups for becoming a reliver. Got it. And now that we know Boros targeting relivers, it's dangerous to have clone bodies made now. I like how Lucas is like, yeah, I don't want to have to end up dead by accident, as opposed to, like, I just don't think I want to become one. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. And that also means, without a backup, you're done for once you're killed. Lucas, please take care of Spacey. You can count on me. I will protect her with my life. Until the day I die, which is shortly. Probably. I'm just saying. Now then, Spacey, we shouldn't get in the way any in his way any longer. So shall we be off? Like, and we're like, uh, I mean, it's... Adolphe gave our former teacher all his trust and was about to send us off. I feel like we should stay silent because I feel like if we seek help, that's going to get us killed. <laughs> is there a save file four before this one? Fuck, there is! Jesus Christ, Lucas has got a lot of fucking bad ends. A lot of them. We're going to end up dead a lot. And I'm going to guess that quietly seek help is a dead. Yes, yeah, stay silent. Yep, all right. I'm sure Adolfe would notice any sign I give him, but... I don't think I should try it now, especially with Lucas around. Worst case scenario, seeking assistance might only endanger Adolfe and the others. I suppressed the urge to ask for help and left the premises alongside my teacher. It's gonna be like, good girl, you didn't try to warn him. And you'd be like, I don't want him and Eve to die. I quietly sighed on the way back. If the person next to me was a normal criminal, all I needed to do was call out for help. But the person next to me was a mass murderer with superhuman qualities that didn't even... That not even the soldiers could stand against. But the idea of sharing the truth about him without a plan was frightening. We headed to the marsh to purchase the newspaper for today, which was filled with articles about what Boro had done. Just last night, the person next to me actually went out and committed his so-called purification. Obviously, the Corps and the Royal Guard had strengthened their units to defend against the horrible murders, which could explain why the marsh was a lot busier now while the sun was still up. Hey, Spacey, are you feeling tired? If you'd like, we can rest a moment on that bench over there. No, I'm fine. His smile really was beautiful and gentle. I doubted that anyone walking past us would ever expect him to be the very killer that terrorized them. I mean, let's be real. You didn't expect that either until now, so... I couldn't blame anyone for not suspecting him either, since I didn't doubt him once 
I didn't doubt him once until I saw him at the crime scene. Oh, I mean, I doubted him from the very beginning, the second we saw Boro when he had the same fucking poses, but, you know. No, that didn't mean that, but I was like, but I'm still, but he's still beautiful, so, like, what ups? And besides, we kind of like the stabby ones, you know? Thinking about it again, he was able to carry all those ingredients back then by himself. And he, and Eve's rib. If those fake Boros didn't exist, someone might have cast a doubt on him for matching the, uh, the description of Boro. He had the strength to swing that huge halberd. He learned the art of battle from his father. Adolphe knew how strong he was, so maybe he might have suspected him. But Adolphe didn't doubt him at all, likely because he trusted Lucas as a teacher. And, like, Lucas is so, like, ethereally beautiful and gentle-seeming, so, like... He passed through a bustling town and finally returned to his house. Dinner tonight was a pre-made meal that Lucas purchased on our way back. Without much to discuss, we finished eating. I quickly went to get changed when... And now then... <laughs> he suddenly lifted me up and set me down onto the bed. Oh... Okay, oh, okay. Instead of the cage, what restricted my freedom now were thick shackles attached to the bedpost. Okay. And a little... I mean, what did I say earlier? Like, just chain me to the bed. I'll be fine. And now you're going to chain me to the bed. And like, but sir, um, I get permission before you work on your kink. I was frozen with fear. Wh what the? Why are you? You may need some space from that cramped cage. So I will have you sleep here every other night from now on. He gently rubbed my bound wrist. It, truthfully, I would remove this if I could, but our minister has ordered your confinement, so that cannot be done. I understand what you're saying, but which emotion is that kindness coming from? Perhaps loneliness. Loneliness? You haven't smiled at me not once since I disclosed my identity to you. So I was hoping you would smile, and if it wasn't real. It's a shameful thing to wish humble to me with a distance that our breaths could touch each other, within a distance that our breaths could touch each other. Just kiss me already. It was an unexpected response. It felt almost like I was in front of a child I just scolded. This is confusing. I know, but I love it. Lucas was kind and gentle, seeking to lead his students on the right path of life. Lucas was Boro, who didn't see life in relivers and killed them mercilessly. Lucas Prowse looked down on himself simply over making his younger sister pout. Which one of him is his true self? They kind of all are. Everybody's got multiple facets. He just has a facet that's crazy. Is the expression he's showing now an act, too? If so, then why? Questions kept coming to mind, but first... Yes. Do you really understand why I haven't smiled in front of you since then? Because, like you... I'm lonely, and... Because I love you. I... I... You saved me countless times through your kindness and words. I was happy when you praised me for doing my best at whatever I did. I found out, along with your identity, that everything was faked. I can't imagine how sad I felt. So much that my sorrow overwrote my rage. Just tell me... Because... What went through your mind as you were deceiving me? It's no use. I was only trying to see what he was thinking. The emotion I tried to kill was rising inside and bringing tears to my eyes. I trusted you. I loved you. I tried my best to, uh, to move a shackled arm to cover my pathetic expression. Let's calm down. You'll only hurt your face with that shackle. Don't touch me! I didn't have much freedom, but struggling somehow made my elbow hit something. My elbow struck Lucas on the temple. <laughs> you know what? I want to feel bad, but you know what? He deserved it a little bit. Before I could say anything, it was too late. It couldn't have injured him at all, but I quickly braced myself to defend from his incoming reaction. Oh, but see, the thing is, is he's not going to be... You, uh, okay, he's not... Okay. He is a psycho murderer, but only for relivers. For you, though, he's like, well, I don't understand why you just hit me. His transparent eyes suddenly melted with heat. Is he mad or turned on by that? Oh! 
Oh, hello. Oh, I do. Oh, oh, I do not mind this. Sir. We elbowed him in the head and that prompted him to knock us down and force kiss us. I'm not. It's a CG in case you did not catch that. With, but there, but hi, Jesus, sir. He is like devouring her face. Fuck. Like. He is just all like. This is hot, okay? He quickly pushed me down as the bed creaked. I'm not moaning, but you know. Well, she's more like, uh, like shocked. I finally realized that he was kissing me when I saw his eyes in front of my face. What? Why? This was so sudden. I... Dramatic music. I tried to fight him off, but there was no way I could overcome his strength. Baby likes it when you fight. Oh, that's a little weird, but okay. For a moment, my voice was blocked by his cold lips. His long hair slowly slid down his face as his feelings were finally released. What joy. I've also been in love with you for so long. What? As I breathed to regain my calm, he confessed his love to me. I'm very sorry if I've made you anxious. But I've never once given you false praise for the very best you've done. Because I love you. I saw you as my love. I didn't. Oh, I didn't say everything to trick you. I kept telling you those words because I wanted to protect you and be your strength. Love. If I didn't know his identity, I would have gladly accepted this love with joy. Now, does this have anything to do with the word angel you mentioned when you captured me? He had told me you referred to me as an angel in her diary. It's not a metaphor. You truly are my angel. No, 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 don't leave. Bring that back. And don't you remember that fire that engulfed that orphanage seven years ago? Everyone gave up hope looking for survivors of that fire, but you survived without a scratch. For a second, I was like, he was not there, was he? No, but like, because Eve saved us. You're the embodiment of a miracle. I think the person you want to put your tongue down their throat of whatever is Eve then, because he's the only reason I'm alive right now. I was certain you were an angel blessed by God himself. Are we the minor that then he was obsessed with? Because like, oh, look at an angel. And then you've been, okay. I mean, like, I don't, I don't, okay. Captured my heart the moment I laid eyes on you. And it was then that I vowed to protect you no matter what. Like, I was. I don't want to go. I wasn't happy with this blind love. It would have been better if he had simply scoffed at me for my feelings. I gritted my teeth and took a deep breath like she is never going to be happy. She's like, first you put me in a cage. I mean, just be happy about it. Oh, and now you're just blindly in love with me. Yeah, I mean, girl, just take it. Why you gotta knock this shit? Why this game gotta, like, yuck my yum over here? Good God. I wanted to dry my tears, but I couldn't bring my hands down to do so. Originally, I intended on keeping these feelings in my heart until my death. But the trouble with that was... The murderer in front of me spoke. I love that. The murderer in front of me spoke that I'm kind of in love with and I'm really enjoying this, but also mad about it, but I like it, but I hate it. You began to raise your head. Unlike what I thought, you weren't simply one to be revered. You were kind, surprisingly active and childish, and instead of pitying Nadia, you saw her for who she was, telling her that she was wonderful. You're a weak and strong girl. His despair and disappointment slowly changed into love, Using even him, he looked at me with an expression that seemed to question what he was saying. The more I looked at you, the more I felt that forbidden emotion overflowing from inside. But when you witnessed the purification ritual, I wondered then if this was my opportunity to keep you by my side. I like that you're crazy and possessive. And stabby. Again, I mean, he's just a pretty good St. Germain barrel. <laughs> I'm going to kidnap you and I'm going to kill, but I actually don't want to kill you. So I'm just going to keep you as my pet. I mean, Lucas just never wanted to kill us. So I'm, listen, I'm just, he forced another kiss on me. I'm okay with this. Love you, Spacey. He's, will you marry me? I'm to choose a partner to stay with me until the end. 
I want that person to be you. I think you have to say yes now. I... Why did I fall in love with such an innocent and cruel person like him? Even worse was... Somewhere deep down, I was looking for a reason. A good reason as to why he loved me. Our lips came together over and over again. Lucas fell asleep ahead of me, and before long... <coughs> there was a cough that counted down the time he had left. I understood that the person in front of me was ruthless. At the same time, I feared that the flame of his life would go out. Yes. I couldn't even reach out to him. Telling me that I have to do my best again to bear this sorrow? I couldn't say that I wanted to believe in him. He was a murderer, simple as that. A ruthless sinner that had taken the lives of many relivers. Still, I couldn't ignore my desire to believe in him. Suddenly, it looked like his eyelids twitched. The pained expression made me wonder what was happening. Don't give me all fakes. I'm a true monster that has all sense of good. I'm sorry. I'm killing you. It's like the way it said is please don't forgive me, but it's please don't. Forgive me. It's like too, like you're like, there's supposed to be a, in that pause, is it supposed to be because he's mumbling in his sleep pause? Like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like, it's just breaking up once it, like, don't forgive me or don't, comma, forgive me. You know? Because it sounds like it's don't, comma, and then forgive me. Or actually, no, maybe he's saying don't forgive me because, but then if you're all fakes, then I'm a true monster. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I understand the don't forgive me because I don't deserve your forgiveness, but at the, if you're all fakes, then I'm a monster. Oh, unless he's saying, if you're fakes, then I'm a monster. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, well, if you're wrong, then I'm wrong. You know, type of a thing, maybe. It's like, I don't know. A single tear rolled down his cheek. That sounds like remorse in his sleep, though, you know? Don't forgive me. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. His voice was weak, but revealed a part of his mind he must not be aware of. What is he saying? Is he dreaming about killing the demon relivers like he does in real life? Something wasn't right. Sorry for killing them? I thought Lucas didn't see relivers as living beings. Once I sensed something was wrong, my mind was flooded with all sorts of doubts. Just because Nadia's condition was able to improve again and again, is that the sole reason that he believed an unknown existence like God wanted him to become a murderer? Knowing how much he loved his sister, he must have researched what kind of cult he was asking for help and what they actually did to cure their patients. What's even stranger is that he doesn't seem to question it, question it at all. I think he, like, so you wonder if he's just like, no, I'm not actually killing people like he's completely delusional. Like, it's a lot easier to delude yourself and accept what you're doing because you're trying to save your sister and it's a desperate it's desperation. You know what I mean? You're in a desperate state. You desperately want to save her. So you'll delude yourself and be like, no, they're not real people. And it's totally okay where there's that part of you inside. The part that's in his sleep right now is like, I don't, you didn't deserve this and this is awful. But he's like stomped that down so far in his subconscious, you know? I wonder why that is. Interesting. Both sides were the same Lucas. But his natural personality and his inner madness were too contradictory. It'd be... There another Lucas Proust I didn't know about. Oh god, I don't know if I can handle a third personality. You know? Oh, now we're going to be Lucas. But not now. We're going to do that next time. So. Oh! Beautiful. Anyway. I will see you next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.